All right, welcome back, Davis. I'm excited. We're going to be talking about the bike and what people need to know when they want to get outside. Your favorite topic. Kind so, <laughs> what are some of uh, safety issues that people with Parkinson's should consider before they ride outside? Well, I mean, for me, and I've been a lifelong cyclist, so it's easier just to jump on a bike and, and roll off and not worry so much about my crashing into something or putting my foot down wrong, coming off the bike. But I would say that, you know, you want to make sure that you're, you're secure on your bike and that you're, you fit your bike well. And by that, I mean that your saddle height is, is good both to, to connect you to the pedals and drive the bike, but also in being able to step and put your foot, foot down. Well, for me, I, I have a chronically stiff neck. And so turning my head to look right to left is, is not as easy as it used to be. And, and I feel like that's something that a lot of my friends who have PD also struggle with. And so for safety's sake, it, what happens is that I'll come up to an intersection and I might just glance right and left quickly and then assume that it's clear and go. But it isn't always clear. And so I've had some occasions where cars are like, you know, what the heck is up with this moron? But thankfully they've stopped and it's not been anything worse than that. And, but so that's, that's definitely an issue is that you've got to, you've got to be paying attention to what you're doing out there. And not every moment of every ride, but certainly when you come up to an intersection or, or if you're riding on a bike path and either passing or getting passed by others and whatnot, there's, there's, there's things that'll get you out there on the bike if, you, if you're not paying attention. And so I feel like that's something to be aware of. Great. So let's talk about pedals for a second. You, um, I know there was a time where you said, oh, I'm going to switch and I'm just going to do the flat pedal where you don't clip in. And now you're back to clipping in. What are some things that people should consider when it comes to different pedals? Well, yeah, flat pedals, as they're called, are, are just like pedals that we all grew up on our kids' bikes with. <laughs> and your foot is loose on the pedal, meaning it's not connected to the pedal platform. And, and whereas clip-in pedals have a little cleat on the bottom of your shoe that, can, that you clip the pedal on, onto your foot with. And so there's advantages and disadvantages to both. I mean, the advantage of having clipping pedals and mostly the reason that I went back to those is because they hold your foot in a consistent position on the pedal. And the reason that that makes it easier for me to pedal is because my, my left foot is my loss of control foot with Parkinson's. And so, I found that when I didn't have the security of having my feet clipped in, then my left foot was, was floating all over the top of the pedal. And I was at risk of losing of my leg flying, flying off to the side and whatnot. But if you don't have that issue in your feet, can consistently stay in one place on the pedal and you're not uh, an ex-pro or, or a long time bike rider, then you might consider flat pedals. 
as a good antidote because again every any time that you roll up to a stop sign i mean your foot is free to come off the pedal and and you don't have the risk of falling over so uh do you schedule your bike rides um depending upon your medication and when you're going to be on or or how do you deal with that well i would say yes I mean, my DBS allows me pretty much to go any time of the day and feel fairly secure in my function. But previous to having the DBS, I would have to definitely time my meds just so that I knew I was going to have a good ride. That's and great. That, and that's fairly critical because if you go out in your off times or or if you come across a place where you're not taking your meds and you're out on a longer ride then you can really get into a quagmire of symptoms and that's not fun right yeah one of the things that we said earlier in a post when we were talking about it is definitely take backup always make sure that you have backup because you just don't know what's going to happen out there. And uh, if you if you have, you know, you're supposed to be taking a med and you get stuck out there, then you'll still be able to to take it and hopefully get, get yourself back home. All right. And what I recall with my cinema era was that I would go out and I could feel really fully functional and very strong for about 45 minutes. And then I slowly turned into the tin man in terms of just <laughs> and slowing down and slowing down and my ability to transmit any energy into the pedals was markedly reduced. And so that was one reason why I got into e-bikes which electric bikes have really revolutionized my ride, my riding, and I'm a huge proponent of them for the, for our community, for the reason that I said was that if you have any function functionality questions that are creeping up through a ride, you can always just boost your power and get home. And that is such a wonderful assurance. Yeah, absolutely. When did you switch and how did you, you know, how'd you make the decision? I'm sure as somebody who's ridden professionally your whole life, you know, going to an e-bike wasn't, you know, just an immediate uh, decision. So what happened? I mean, we had some friends in the industry who were saying, you know, you should check this technology out. And this was probably maybe four or five years ago. And they said, because, you know, instead of as now, where they were watching me struggle mightily just to go up hills because of my, my, the, the ebb of my ability to transmit any power into my legs was down to about 30%, say from what it was back in the day. And, and so I just said, well, okay, I'm game. And I just got on this bike and it was so fun. <laughs> it was so fun, I can't tell you now, just to be able to, to go up hills at, at, a, at a moderate pace that I would have been able to do on a regular bike 30 years ago. That, that I had not seen that kind of power ability for years. And, and so that was the joy factor was intense and immediate. Yeah, and I that it allowed you to stay with your buddies who yeah. are, you know, they're just going to keep going like Polly, right? She's just going to head up the hill. And so now with an e-bike, you know, the social aspect, you're not losing out on that anymore. Yeah, exactly. 
And also, I mean, I'm still getting a great workout because the, the first day that I rode the e-bike, I was trying the different power levels. And of course, they have a turbo zone, which, which gives you like 400 watts of free power, which is a tremendous amount of power and actually too much power. And it took me only a little while to realize that for me and for my needs, which was that I just needed a little boost to go to go faster and, and easier uphills, but still get a workout, was that I would just set the, the power settings to the base level and leave them there. And then I can ride, yeah, with people like Polly Dawkins and other friends who are, who are considerably stronger riders than I am. But I feel like I'm, I'm just riding with them and at their speed comfortably. And, and I still feel like I've done something when I get home. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, the great thing about e-bikes is, you know, if you, if you wanna, mountain bike e-bike or a road bike e-bike or a commuter or a, um, a uh, like a townie kind of cruiser bike. Um, e-bikes are in everything now. So they're pretty fun. They're pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. also you use it for trans, I mean, you use it now as your main mode of transportation in a non-COVID world when you're out and about doing errands and all that kind of stuff, right? Yes. I mean, that's my any excuse that I have to get out on my bike. I'll use as a, as a form of workout. One thing that people should be aware of with e-bikes is that they're considerably heavier than non-e-bikes, and so you want to factor that in because they are, they can be laborious to move around. Not, not when you're actively pedaling them with the power on, but more so just getting them in and out of your garage and whatnot. And so as a former professional rider, I guess I would say that I've gravitated towards the lighter end of e-bikes, which means lightness always equates to expense. But, but I wanted a bike that felt somewhat like my old road racing bicycles. And so currently I have two bikes which are fantastic. And they're made by Trek and Pinamon. And, and those bikes I get on and I feel like I've, I'm riding a regular road bike. And they're quiet and they certainly have as much power as I need. And so this is not to say that it's a big, a big pitch for a certain product, but just that as the bikes evolve and the prices start to come down, you will find more and more high-end quality bikes that are still affordable. Yeah, that's great. So what happens when the weather takes you inside? What kind of a what kind of a setup do you have for your bike inside? I mean, when I'm inside, I use what's called the Stages, the Stages brand indoor training bike. And this is a bike that I first came across at, at our Pedaling for Parkinson's group ride at, in the Colorado Athletic Club. And it's it's been a phenomenal tool because it's it's easy to to set up and get fit to my position as well as it gives the proper amount of data and I feel like that's 
really an important component because if you know what your RPMs are and what your wattage output is, then you can compare the cross rides. And so I feel like that's, it's a wonderful tool. But there's, there's certainly lots of indoor bikes out there. And, and so it's a matter of defining your budget, your budget. But, but if you can afford a bike, you by all means should get something to engage yourself indoors in pedaling. The important thing with riding indoors is that you maintain a, a high cadence. And so that's why having, having that ability to, to define your RPM easily and, and on, on a screen in front of you is really helpful. And when you combine that with your power output, those two elements can see you riding, riding well and gaining the most benefit out of riding indoors. Great. Well, thanks, Davis, for talking to us about bikes. Uh, we'll be back with another episode pretty soon. Thanks, Mel.